Okay, good morning. I'm Rob Kemp, and you're with us at Kemp Sales here uh, for our sort of boat show specials that we've been doing. Um, today, we've got uh, Chris Owen with us from uh, Challenge Sailcloth, which is Chaos Bruce, the importer in the UK. Um, Chris, before you ended up this side of the fence, your name is probably quite well known on north of the border from Owen Sales. You were a sailmaker in the previous life. That's right, in the previous life. Um, I was at a own sail loft for 30 years. I've been in the whole trade for over 40 years. Um, I started my own business in 1984, uh, 30 years in the business and I actually came through right through from making sales on the floor right through to where we are today using the CAD software which is really really interesting for me so I've seen it from both sides of the fence. I'm really enjoying this side of the fence <laughs> in my later years um, but it is still very interesting something I'm really you never stop learning I and mean, that's one thing every time we have a chat we come across things we've both come across in the industry and it's still really interesting and it's nice working now with a sailcloth company sailcloth's always a bit of a dark art I always thought they tend to keep stuff to themselves and how they twist the fibers and how much resin content and we all look at graphs and go yeah okay but at the end of the day it's putting the sails together that really you know for the customer that makes it all worthwhile so it's nice to be on this side of the fence just touching on that comment about grass you talked about, I think most of our um, customers probably wouldn't realise that every roll of fabric or batch of fabric comes with a with a graph, so we can have a look at the performance figures before the sale's made. Mm. I mean, nowadays, especially with the software, and we both, you know, you still use Smart Azure software, there's an analysis system in it as well that takes that graph and transposes it and means that we've got something of real value to look at the sales to see how it's stretching or how it's not stretching in the performance before we actually start cutting the roll. So as you say, every roll of cloth has to have a graph for that particular roll. And it makes us confident that what we're using is we're going to get good results. Yeah, from a backup point of view, what we do here at Kemp Sales is every single cell we cut, we keep a, a list of the lot and batch number. So God forbid we ever have a problem five, 10 years down the line with the sale, we can speak to, to the cloth guys and they can go back and have a look at the test figures on it. So it, what, what we're here for today really is to try and touch on some of the ideas of some fabrics. We've spoken to another cloth supplier and obviously Chris has got the chance to come and have a chat about the Challenge um, product, which some of you guys may know some of the, uh, the trade names like Newport, Marblehead, etc. So if I just give a run through with Chris from Kemp Sales angle, you know, when we're, we're looking at quoting a sale, we look at, at three kind of standards, if that makes sense. And that's a, a regular standard woven, then a hybrid woven, and then a, and a cruising laminate. And I know you guys focus mainly on, on, on improving your woven type side of it, not so much on the, on the hybrids, but with Chris's sale making background, I'm sure he will um, offer an opinion because he's not, <laughs> not ashamed of doing that at all. Um, so and if we look at standard wovens, you, you've got a whole massive range, haven't you, within the Challenge? Well, I say massive, I've tried to reduce it since I joined them. And one of the things when I joined Challenge was that it was a big range and it was quite complicated. So I basically said to them, look, you know, try and condense it so that the sale maker can understand what he's getting. So we basically split it down into sort of an entry level which is our Newport range, which has got three styles, which is a, an all purpose fabric, a low aspect fabric for those yachts that are really sort of squat rigs, short rigs, and a pro radial, which is used for radial uh, woven sails. And then you move into the next category, which is slightly more performance and, and endurance orientated is what's called Fastnet, which are much bigger, much bigger yarns, much better protection from UV, which is, is a big, big problem with sails because they're up in the, UV all the time. So the fast nets for more endurance, longer distances, people who are doing voyages rather than just a, a day sail. And then moving on to warp drive, which is our bespoke radial fabric. It's a true warp orientated fabric that's used for radial sails. And onto our marble head, which is our top of the range, most tightly woven Dacron that we can, which is very good performance. Um, so just touching back onto that, that radial thing, without wishing to give away challenges, magic, secret recipe, um, <laughs> you know, when you're weaving something together with a weft and a, a warp, surely that warp's got crimp in it, so uh, people yeah. know this big thing about yeah. straight warp, that's, that's that's physics the, is right, you can't do that, can you? That's the big secret, <laughs> and the, 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 the one thing we do with warp, the warp drive, it's why it's named like that, is we actually tension the warp drive, the warp fibres out in the long direction of the roll to take away that crimp. So we weave the fill yarns, which are the ones going across the roll, over and under, but the warp ones are tensioned and it requires a different type of loom, much more expensive and stronger loom to actually tension these fibres. They're under a lot of tension. Whereas people say, you know, a radial fabric is a balanced fabric, so the, the weft and the warp are the same. 
but you eventually do get crimp so eventually as that cell stretches that over and under fibers which are longer tend to straighten out so for radial sails it means making narrow panels and things like that to, to, to make the sail last longer but the warp drive is specifically for radial sails there must be some piece of kit because the warp beams are normally pretty long on these yeah. things aren't they yeah. it's quite it's quite interesting yeah and the way they twist them as well it's quite it's, it's a real science which is why i enjoyed getting into it from sail making because it's things you don't normally you wouldn't normally go into a weaving place and say oh what's happening here why are you doing that well we do that because we don't want any crimp that's yeah, so why we're really grateful for you guys coming along and, and talking to, to our viewers here because you know when we're at a boat show or customers come and see us here we get all the samples out and you look at them they're just bits of white fabric they they all look the same I'm they pretty do. sure to the layman at the, at the other end at home they they all bits of white cloth well, it used to make me laugh it still makes me laugh when you see a little piece of sample there and you you, know, you go there you go after all that and no it's all the same but when you see it on a roll it really hits you in the face a difference when you start pulling across the bias and looking at when you lay a roll of cloth out like on your bench you know 10 meters you roll a piece of 10 meter cloth out you immediately see if it's a good you know a good fabric oh, we can tell from literally the first second you unroll it yeah. the 10 meter long table if you've got any twist or um, waviness in it we can't really use it so from our point of view consistency is key, key. Um, yeah and if God forbid there are walk, you know, flaws in it, as long as they're well marked, we can then work around it with a... Well that brings us back to the graphs, yeah. that's, the real, you know, as you, as you said, you know, your, your uh, records, you've got to keep records of graphs, because if you like a particular role, we can find it for you again, you know, and again, and again, and again, and that consistency takes all the guesswork out with the graphs. So if we come back to a, you know, a few standard boats that maybe people have got relevance with at, at home, and we can talk about what fabrics mm -hmm. you may recommend on that. And obviously we've got our views when, when it comes to hybrids, which I know you guys don't make, but we'll, we'll come through that. So, and I've got my list here, which um, we talked about before we started filming. We've got, take a, a, a westerly centre, we've got quite a few of them here in Poole and down in our Gosport area, there's, there's quite a few in, in Portsmouth Harbour. Take a customer, sails one of those, up and down the sailing, maybe a long trip to Poole is his, his general sailing. Um, where would you kind of go with, with that? I think probably where it fits into our range is, is the Newport range. And depending on where you want to go with that, do you know, uh, main sale's pretty easy. I think AP, um, it, you know, the AP is a pretty, it's a good fabric. If it was, a, if the Genoa is, well, it is pretty low aspect on a Centaur, then you might move to the Newport low aspect. And if you wanted to upgrade that to, to really, you know, if you're going to use your Genoa in anger, in other words, you're going to roll it away and sell with it, maybe roll to 100%, you might think about a radial sale just to give you that little bit more performance if that if you're that way inclined you know but the Newport is really is really what you're, you're looking at for that type of so but there's no reason you can't upgrade to a the main to a marble head it depends if it's fully battened or it's not fully battened that help, the battens really do help I think on the main sail to, to protect the main sail so it's not as critical as the Genoa fabric I always think when people are choosing fabrics the Genoa is the one because it stands there at the front of the rig takes all the hammer takes smashes past the rigging the mast gets rolled away halfway pulled out again so compared to the main which is protected with battens it's the one that i always spend a little bit more time looking at and so deciding so you basically invest the material budget yeah into the, yeah into if i was going to do center. that i'd say look the main sail's been protected spend a little bit more money on the genoa if you can to upgrade it a little bit more to either radio and if you want to go full blast then warp drive you know it's just a totally radial fabric so but that's going right through the range you know so in, in terms of the construction if we take the the new port um, going through the marble head the r words you know resin a lot of our customers get terrified about the r word yeah i personally don't mind a firmer finish sail particularly on a head sail no um because it's rolled up you're not taking it on and off all the time but main sail maybe something a little bit softer might be yeah i mean just to explain you know probably the, the sailor doesn't know is that the more resin you put in a, a sail i always if I see a lot of resin in a sail, then I think, well, what's it hiding? But then a firm finish, as you say, some you know, sail makers prefer a slightly firm because when you stitch it, you get a nice smooth sail. Because when you obviously when you puncture it with a needle, anything that's soft and flimsy will just crimp, and, and it doesn't make a smooth sail. So the firmer the finish, theoretically, should make a smoother sail from when it's brand new. But the problem is then, you know, the resin then breaks down, uh, not so much in a main sail that's got battens, but certainly in a Genoa, it can, you know, it can break down. The good thing about having a slightly firmer fabric is the bias, because our big killer with sail design is bias stretch. If we get any problems with bias, the sail stretches, becomes 
not the design shape and then we're you know the, the sales out of balance yes. i mean you, from our angle we, kept, so as we look at the the resin as um, a performance enhancer rather than the glue sticking all together mm -hmm. so if you're looking at a material which is just stuff full of resin because the fibers are all big and not very well woven that we wouldn't use it but something that's got a resin coating on it to yeah. enhance the performance that, that's a different yeah story. but then we're back to the graphs again you yeah. can pretty much look at uh, a graph and say oh that's, that's initially in its first pull when we pull the, the, the sample if it initially goes very quickly you know that you've snapped the resin so you can tell very quickly that where the graph is if it's if it's resin orientated but what you're saying is you as a cell maker prefer to design cells with a firm finish knowing that you're going to get a nice yeah, there's, a trade -off there's a trade-off on There's a trade-off, yeah, that's a word. It's not filling the holes yeah. in. That's probably what we're saying. So that brings us on to my next boat selection, um, which is a, a Beneteau Oceanus 311. Let's say they're based up in North Wales, Petheria or somewhere like that. Do a bit of club racing, although they're quite keen on their, um, their mm. evening racing up there. So taking that type of boat, again, relatively low aspect rig, um, where would you go on your range for, uh, for options on that one? I think if, if you want performance, now performance, you can equate that to lighter weight, less stretch because basically when you sheet the sails and when you're racing you don't want to be trimming them all the time you want to be concentrating on you know <laughs> sailing the boat getting the shifts right is that you basically want self trimming sails almost so the better quality cloth like certainly warp dry for the Genoa will be I go straight to that and certainly marble head for the main sail um, and we do a low aspect um, marble head as well so you've got you know, the highest boat to low. so that would be my go-to if I didn't want to go down the laminate or higher tech routes that would that would suit me I think on a you know a boat that's dual purpose cruising and, and racing that's yeah. quite important because performance for, for most people is not how fast it goes it's no. how long it holds its shape and yeah now it trims do I have to keep re-trimming the Genoa can I hear it fluttering behind the main have I got to go down and trim it again and whereas with it sails that are you know good quality cloth means that you do less trimming yeah, I mean, after we get asked, I'm sure you used to when you had your making head on, how long's my sail going to last? Yeah. And you know, we use this X, Y graph thing, so yeah. you've got sort of performance in this end and durability along the base, and some cheaper fabrics drop off a cliff really quickly yep. in terms yep. of, of performance, but they stay at the big white triangle for a long time. So uh, you know, we're looking at one that's got a slow degeneration. Yeah, I think for the for the from a trimming point of view, which you know all sailors do, whether it's Genoa or Maine, is that what we're trying to do is keep the exit of the Genoa nice and straight straight as we can and and not make the sail the sail wants to be able to exit that air off the genoa onto the main and if you've done your job right on the main sail it'll flow off the main so it's really about is that cloth going to give you that and will it keep that for a, a certain amount of time as you say with the xy graph how long is it going to last yeah it's a trade off isn't it you know if you go out the first time in a four six it's not <laughs> that graph's going to be fairly high so you know the way you use your sails and the way you you know try and ease them in I, i'm still a great believer in when sails are brand new and i know it's always sometimes difficult if you can use them without reefing first time out just give them it does make a difference i noticed that sailing dinghies if you put a set of brand new dinghy sails on go out sailing when you know it's you're dumping the main all the time those sails will have have their distance so moving on to my third boat on our menu, which is a, a bit more of a complicated option possibly, is a Bavaria 44 in mast furling mainsail. Say the boat's out in Greece with a husband and wife couple cruising it three months of the year, high UV. And yeah. it, my go-to product on that very much would be a, a Vectran. And I know you guys don't make that anymore, um, but a hybrid would be my choice for an in-mast sail. Yeah, um, I think that's I a good. Your take on this. The loads, you know, when you're getting up to a 40, 44 foot, 45 foot boat, the loads uh, we are starting to talk about proper loads. You know, when you sheet that main in, you really are cranking on some loads. Particularly if it's reefed. Yeah. So, you know, you've got, say, when you do roll it, let's say you roll it, you know, 10%, you're then relying on the fabric. No patches, nothing. It's on its own. So it has to be much, much stronger. So it's got to be a, a fabric that's really going to take those loads. Otherwise, the sail's just going to get deeper and deeper. So yeah, my, my my take on that would be a hybrid or or maybe a you know a higher end Dacron if you didn't want to go to because uh, UV is still a problem. Yeah, I mean, even with a mass main that that you know that gap in the mass that can, that sunlight can still get through there. You know, we see lots of them. You get this sort of straight, yeah, yeah, straight. wide along the back. Yeah, it's got UV I'm surprised it. nobody's invented something that covers the back because it is a problem out in the Med and especially the Caribbean. You see, you know, as you say, you see that strip. You know what it's been, and it's that UV. Uh, we had a sail in, the, uh, I think it was the back end of this week, um, 
where the EV's got to the back of it. And the yeah. cell's only four or five years old and yeah. it's a fairly low quality material that, that the cell maker had used and the whole leech has fallen off. I think it's very hard for the sailor to understand and we always moan about oh the weather's rubbish you know and when I come from in Scotland and we've had a fantastic summer and I'm noticing just talking to sort of local cell makers that the UVs are, you know they, we have had a, a tremendous summer We've had literally six, six, seven weeks of fantastic sailing conditions, and everybody's been out sailing with it, which is great. But of course, the downside is the the, U, the wear rate right? and the UV has been, uh, you know, it, you don't, even though it's not a, a particularly hot day, it doesn't matter. It's that ultraviolet light that actually damages the sails, which we can't. You know, we want to go out sailing. We've got to do it, but a good quality cloth will withstand, you know, more UVs and so a higher tenacity of the yarn, yes, the greater yes, the UV resistance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always a good reason to look yeah. at the you know, the fabric is, is key. You know, we can make the best sail in the world, but yeah. if the fabric's poor, you end up with a poor sail. So. That's right, well, that's my job now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my last boat is uh, Discovery 54. We've done loads of discoveries um, over the years. We make all their sails, or not most of them, for them. Uh, 54 just won the Blue Water Yacht of the Year. Yeah, um, we've just, just made the, the last batch. Again, we used a hybrid on that, but you know this is a boat that's going to go ocean-type sailing. Yeah. So, you know, no messing about. Yeah, yeah it's, it, there can't be any any issues with. You know. With that slutter rig, you've got you know, quite high aspect on the yeah. fifty four. Yeah. But the Genoa is very much a reaching only Genoa. Yeah. Because it's an un, you know, it's not the um, supporting stay on the mast. So, you know, the Genoa like that. Would you maybe look at possibly going to a radial option on that with your walk yeah, board? Yeah, I, I was looking with something a bit more basic. I tend to within mass main slightly worry me is that nobody will give you a cast iron guarantee it's going to fit in, and I think cross cut you know it's going to fit in but with a radial sail you just you're not quite sure i'd like to use a warp drive because they can make a better sail or sorry a, a nicer sail uh, but i think to be honest it's just getting it back in the chamber that we're and it's not so much getting it in and out in the marina it's out in the ocean i think that very much depends on the mast isn't it from our yeah. the, the yeah if it's the, a seldom we're, we're pretty seldom we're, we're all right because yeah. they've got the tension in absolutely if it's a, one of the French masts that doesn't have the tension mandrels yeah. in and they've yeah. got really narrow gaps as well. That's that what we're gives, talking about. Gives you yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah. So to be safe, yeah. I think anything other than a cell then, then you really have to go cross cut. But yeah, I mean I've done you know, in my time I've done quite a few radial and they made really nice sails because they do I think they do last a lot. Those loads coming out of the crew clue pretty of high. a pretty high, especially on a, like a high aspect sail, like these discoveries. You know, the loads are right up the leech, so if you can use it. A rig on that 54 is yeah. colossal, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So when we got the sail plan, I thought we got the wrong one, I thought it was for a 58, <laughs> it, it yeah. is massive. Yeah. So, crosswind sails as we call them, or offwind sails, I think the, the top down furling type systems of massive and bottom up furlers have massively changed the, the cruising sailors oh, offwind yeah. use. Yeah. I know you guys are working on some new nylons, we've got something to, to test, so. Yeah, I mean, we're working on, you know, we've had the fibre max range for a long time now, and really, we just tried to improve a, the weave, not so much the weave, because we think the weave is pretty good on the fire max, but it's the coatings, it's the porosity, and we can always tell that by how well it sucks down on the vacuum table, but it's really to keep the consistency and not to get it wear, not let it wear it off. That's the problem with these top down furlers. They are being basically massacred on the, on the foil, and it, you know, it's not the way, the, with a snuffer, it just comes down, there's a bit of friction there, but not much. But with these top downs, they're really torturing the sail. I think using the word furling can be a little unfair. It's yeah. more of a, a uh, top down wrapping system. Wrapping system, that's pretty good. We've brilliant. seen quite a lot of colour leaching as well. Yes, from certain yes. Islands. I know that's yeah, when you, you squeeze, it's like squeezing a flannel. If you yeah. really squeeze it hard, you do see the colour. But that, and that's one of the big things we've been keen on uh, with this new fabric is that to uh, A to stop porosity, keep the finish on for much, much longer, the urethane finish and actually stop this leaching problem. Absolutely can't have that with different colours, you know, when they say. And the problem is that these top downs, they might not be used for three or four weeks. They're, they're, rolled, you know, they're, they're wrapped wet and then they're left, which is the perfect scenario for leaching. So that's this new fabric we've tested and tested and we're still testing it as you, you know, you've got some to test. And that's one of the big things were, because I, you know, my input to the to challenge is that look, we are torturing spinnakers now much more than you've ever done before. They get used more. Yes, yeah. they do because of the the kits better now. You know the top down furlers. All you used to have before was a snuffer, or you're on your own. And I think these new advances, which are terrific, it means that you know husband and wife 
or can, can go sailing and have a good down a decent sized downwind sail and especially with it. some of the more modern boats like the Hansas for example yeah. they've got tiny self-taking jibs yeah. you need something to give yeah. you a bit when of you turn the corner you know and then you go Ooh, it won't go and then you put these sails up it makes it really enjoyable and it's under control that's the thing it's you know if something happens the proverbial hits the proverbial, you can get rid of it, that's well, the key. Later in the week we've got hopefully Andy Postle from All Sparks coming oh, to talk yeah. to us um, with his carver and sailed and furling head on, so that should make an interesting theory. Um, just finally before we, uh, we, sh we shut down, uh, performance sales, you know, on the club race side of stuff. Mm -hmm. I know Challenge don't, don't do a, a laminate option, but again with your sail making background, there's that kind of balance between membrane systems or panelled yeah. sails. I mean, we very much favour the panelled option um, because well, so I think you get a bit more control. But yeah, and I think consistency again. It's like, I like to see a graph and I like to be able to analyse the cloth. So I like roll goods. And that's not just because I work for challenges. My experience with membranes, good, bad or indifferent, has been, I, don't, I can't get a graph with the, the fabric. It's different every time the fiber layout and I use the software as well the design membrane sales but I don't manufacture them and it's it's that sort of I haven't got control and I think you're probably the same is that I want to see that roller cloth roll it out cut it we've had good and bad I mean, yeah we've yeah had I mean, membranes with films falling off and we've had them that have lasted forever so yeah I mean I think you know we've moved on a lot how long have been out now what 15 years 15. yeah so if you haven't cracked it now <laughs> You know things are moving on at, at quite a rate but i think for the racing side where weight is a big thing i mean i always say well why are you going for a carbon membrane when you've got an aluminium mast but people still do because they want the, they want to take the weight out of the rig but for me you know I, if it was me on a boat i'd, I'd want to see a carbon rig full carbon rig to just before you go to the, yeah, the full yeah, race yeah, laminate yeah i mean the, you know, the whole thing is the shape retention because you don't want to be buying racing sales every six months, you know, the club sale who's racing really wants his sales to last and the problem is that they don't last as much as roll goods, um, whatever you say, I'm sorry, do you know us, do not, absolutely film on film, I mean they are making advances where they're putting the taffeta in the middle, but you're increasing the amount, sometimes you look at the membrane, it's heavier than the, the roll goods. I think one of the first membranes we made was when I had my old Sunfast oh, and no. um, we'd made a roll goods laminate sale um, and then we made a membrane and we went out of our way to make the membrane as light as we could yeah, in construction yeah, yeah, yeah. weighed the two and the membrane sale was half a kilo heavier yeah, than, yeah. The, than the roll goods yeah, one yeah. and we'd gone properly to town and trying to keep the weight out of it yeah, so it's all it's glue yeah. yeah it's a glue that's the problem but well thanks very much for coming over no today problem. chris and Appreciate i'm sure if any guys listening at home want some samples of the materials chris has been talking about just uh, message us through our website or social media platforms and we'll send you out a little key ring with some um, fabrics on it and thanks for coming chris no problem. Thank okay. you.